Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we're diving into a topic that feels like it's pulled straight from a cold. War thriller, but it's happening. Right now, in our world. We're talking about two of the most powerful weapons ever created, designed not to fight battles on the ground, but to shape the balance of global power from thousands of miles away. That's right, we're comparing China's mysterious DF-61 missile and America's brand new LGM-35A Sentinel. Now I know what you're thinking. Missiles, nukes, why does this even matter to us? Well, here's the truth. These weapons are the silent backbone of international security. They're the reason superpowers don't go to war with each other. They're the reason treaties are signed. The reason leaders hesitate before making any move. They're not meant to be fired. They're meant to send a message. Don't even think about it. And today we're putting two of these ultimate deterrents side by side. On one hand, we have the DF-61. It's not a missile you'll hear about in the news every day. In fact, it's so secretive that most of what we know about it comes from leaked reports, military analysis, and educated guesses. China likes to keep its cards close to the chest. And the DF-61 is one of those cards, a shadow in the East, built to remind the world that Beijing is a player you can't ignore. On the other hand, we have the LGM-35A Sentinel. Unlike the DF-61, this one is no secret. The U.S. has openly announced it, poured billions into it, and proudly labeled it as the replacement for the aging. Minuteman the three think of it as America upgrading its old. Reliable defense system into something built for the future. AI, missile with next generation accuracy, range and survivability. But here's where things get interesting. These two weapons aren't just about specs like range or payload. They represent two very different philosophies. China has always talked about minimum, deterrence, just enough. Nuclear weapons to stop anyone from attacking them first. The U.S., on the other hand, plays the game of extended deterrence. Not just protecting itself, but also its allies all over the world. The DF-61 says, we can strike if we must. The Sentinel says, we'll always stay ahead. And when you put them side by side, you don't just get a missile comparison. You get a window into how two superpowers think about war, peace, and survival. But before we break down the details, let's take a step back in history. Nuclear weapons have been around since 1945. And ever since then, they've been the invisible hand shaping global politics. During the Cold War, the US and the Soviet Union stockpiled thousands of warheads, creating a doctrine called mutually assured destruction. Basically, it meant that if one side launched, the other would launch back and both countries would be reduced to ash. As terrifying as that sounds, it actually worked. It kept the peace for decades. Fast forward to today, and while the Cold War may be over, the nuclear shadow is still with us. Russia has its massive arsenal. The U.S. still leads in global reach. And China? Well, China is rapidly modernizing, determined to make sure no one forgets about its capabilities. That's why the DF-61 matters. It's part of Beijing's effort to modernize its nuclear forces and send a clear message. We're in this game too. Meanwhile, the U.S. had a problem. Its Minuteman III missiles have been sitting in silos since the 1970s. Yes, they've been upgraded and maintained. But let's face it, 50 years is a long time for a missile system. The world has changed. Threats have changed. Technology has changed. So America needed something new. Enter the LGM-35A Sentinel a weapon designed to carry the U.S. nuclear deterrent into the next century. And that's why this video is so important. Because when we put the DF-61 and the Sentinel side by side, we're not just comparing specs, we're comparing strategies, doctrines, and visions of the future. Which one has the edge? Which one tells us more about the country behind it? And what do these weapons mean for global stability in the years to come? So stick around, because in this video we're going to break it all down. First, we'll look at the DF-61, what we know, what we don't know and why it matters. Then we'll explore the Sentinel, how it was built, why it's so important, and what makes it different from its predecessor. Finally, we'll put them head to head in a full comparison. So by the end of this video, you'll have a clear picture of how East and West stack up in the world of intercontinental ballistic missiles. This is DF-61 vs. LGM-35A Sentinel. Mystery vs. Modernization. East vs. West, and the stakes? Nothing less than the future of global power. Let's talk about the DF-61. Now, if you've been following missile development over the years, you know that China is a master of secrecy, unlike the United States or even Russia, where new weapons are often announced. 
With big press releases or even flashy demonstrations, Beijing prefers silence. It doesn't reveal much. And that's exactly why the DF-61 is such a fascinating subject. It's not a household name like the Dongfeng-41, which China proudly shows off in military parades. Instead, the DF-61 lives in the shadows, rarely mentioned, barely confirmed and wrapped in layers of mystery. So what do we actually know? The DF-61 is believed to be an intercontinental ballistic missile, an ICBM designed by China in the late wind Cold War period. Reports suggest that development may have started in the 1970s or early 1980s, at a time when China was trying to expand beyond its smaller, medium-range missile capabilities. The goal? To create a weapon that could match the reach of American and Soviet ICBMs, giving Beijing a credible way to deter superpowers who might think about pushing too hard. But here's where things get tricky. The DF-61 may have never entered full service. Some sources claim it was more of a test bed, a missile program that laid the E. Foundation for later designs like the DF-31 and DF-1. Others argue that a few prototypes were built, possibly even deployed in small numbers. The truth is China doesn't want us to know. By keeping the details blurred, Beijing creates uncertainty. And in nuclear strategy, uncertainty itself is a weapon. So let's break down what's been speculated about its design. The DF-61 was reportedly a solid fuel missile, which was a huge step forward at the time. Solid fuel means faster launch times compared to older liquid fuel missiles, which needed to be filled right before launch, a slow and vulnerable process. With solid fuel, the DF-61 could theoretically be kept ready for longer and fired at a moment's notice, giving China a real leap in readiness. As for range, estimates vary, but most experts place it somewhere between 6,000 and 8,000 kilometers. That's enough to reach U.S. bases in Asia, Russia, or even parts of Europe depending on where it was launched. Payload capacity is thought to have been around a single nuclear warhead, possibly in the 1 to 2 megaton range. Again, not confirmed, but powerful. Enough to deliver a devastating strike if it were ever used. Now, compared to modern missiles, those numbers might not sound groundbreaking. But remember, in the 1970s and 80s, this would have been a huge deal for China. Up until then, most of its missile arsenal was short or medium range, aimed at regional targets. An ICBM like the DF-61 represented ambition. It said, we're not just defending our borders, we're thinking globally. And this fits perfectly with China's nuclear philosophy. Unlike the US or Russia, which built thousands of warheads during the Cold War, China has always taken a minimalist approach. They don't need the biggest stockpile. They don't need to match every American missile with one of their own. What they want is credibility. Enough weapons to guarantee that if anyone ever attacked them, they could strike back hard enough to make it unthinkable. The DF-61, whether fully deployed or not, played its part in that philosophy. Its existence, or even the rumor of its existence, helped China send a message to the world. We are not to be underestimated. And in nuclear strategy, sometimes perception is just as powerful as reality. Today, the DF-61 is mostly talked about in hushed tones among analysts. Some believe it was canceled quietly. Others say it evolved into later designs, and a few suggest it might still exist in limited form. What's undeniable is that it represents a key moment in China's journey from a regional power to a global nuclear force. So when we talk about the DF-61, we're not just talking about a missile. We're talking about China's mindset in the late Cold War era, a nation that wanted to step onto the world stage, prove its resilience and ensure its survival against any threat. Whether it fired a single test shot or stood ready in hidden silos, the DF-61 helped shape the nuclear balance we know today. And that's the power of secrecy. You don't always have to show your cards. Sometimes, just knowing or suspecting that a missile like the DF-61 exists is enough to change the game. Now let's shift gears and talk about America's brand new nuclear heavyweight, the LGM-35A Sentinel. If the DF-61 is wrapped in secrecy, the Sentinel is the complete opposite. This is a missile the United States wants the world to know about. It's not hidden in rumors, it's openly funded, officially announced, and positioned as the future of America's land-based nuclear arsenal. And make no mistake, this isn't just a replacement for an old missile. It's a complete reimagining of what an intercontinental ballistic missile should be in the 21st century. So why did the U.S. build it in the first place? Well, let's rewind. Since the 1970s, 
America has relied on the Minuteman III, a missile that has served faithfully for over 50 years. And while it's been upgraded many times, new guidance systems, better warheads, modernized controls. It's still a missile designed in the Cold War era. Technology doesn't stand still. Adversaries like Russia and China are modernizing their arsenals. And so the Pentagon decided it was time to move on. Enter the LGM-35A Sentinel, built by Northrop Grumman. The Sentinel is designed to serve until at least the 2070. Ah, that's right. This missile is expected to be America's nuclear backbone for half a century. The scale of this program is massive. We're talking about new missiles, new silos, new command systems, and an entire ecosystem of technology built around keeping the U.S. deterrent credible for decades to come. Now let's talk about the missile itself. Unlike China's DF-61, which is still debated in terms of capability, the Sentinel is crystal clear in its design philosophy. It's a solid fuel silo-based ICBM, meaning it can be launched quickly with little preparation and from hardened underground facilities. This gives it both readiness and survivability. Even if an enemy tried to take out America's silos in a first strike, the Sentinel force would still be able to retaliate with devastating power. In terms of range, while exact numbers are classified, it's expected to easily exceed 12,000 kilometers, enough to hit any target on Earth payload. The Sentinel is believed to carry the W87-1 thermonuclear warhead with yields in the hundreds of kilotons. More importantly, it's built with modularity in mind. That means the missile can be adapted with future technologies, whether that's improved warheads, advanced countermeasures, or new guidance systems. Speaking of guidance, this is where the Sentinel really shines. America has always prided itself on missile accuracy, and the Sentinel is expected to be more precise than anything before it. We're talking about circular error probable, SEP, so small that the missile could reliably hit hardened targets like underground bunkers. In the world of nuclear strategy, that kind of accuracy means flexibility, being able to deter not just with massive city-destroying strikes, but also with precision against military targets if ever needed. Today, the DF-61 is mostly talked about in hushed tones among analysts. Some believe it was canceled quietly. Others say it evolved into later designs, and a few suggest it might still exist in limited form. What's undeniable is that it represents a key moment in China's journey from a regional power to a global nuclear force. So when we talk about the DF-61, we're not just talking about a missile. We're talking about China's mindset in the late Cold War era, a nation that wanted to step onto the world stage, prove its resilience, and ensure its survival against any threat. Whether it fired a single test shot or stood ready in hidden silos, the DF-61 helped shape the nuclear balance we know today. And that's the power of secrecy. You don't always have to show your cards. Sometimes, just knowing or suspecting that a missile like the DF-61 exists is enough to change the game. All right, we've looked at China's mysterious DF-61 and America's cutting-edge LGM-35A Sentinel. Now it's time to put them head-to-head. -head. And remember, this isn't just about which missile is better. It's about what each weapon says about the nation that built it and how both fit into the bigger picture of global security. So let's start with range. The DF-61 is estimated to reach somewhere between 6,000 and 8,000 kilometers. That's impressive, especially for the era it was developed in, and it would have allowed China to target U.S. bases in Asia, Russia, and parts of Europe. But the Sentinel, that's a whole different league. With a range expected to be over 12,000 kilometers, it can strike anywhere on Earth. No target is out of reach. In terms of sheer reach, the Sentinel takes the win. Next up, payload. The DF-61 is believed to have carried a single warhead. Maybe around one to two megatons. That's massive in raw destructive power. But nuclear strategy isn't just about how big the bang is, it's about flexibility and survivability. The Sentinel, carrying the W87-1 thermonuclear warhead, has a lower yield compared to some Cold War monsters, but it makes up for it with accuracy and reliability. Its precision allows it to destroy hardened military targets with less explosive power. In other words, the DF-61 relies on brute force while the Sentinel relies on surgical precision. Now let's talk technology. The DF-61, if it truly existed as deployed hardware, was a product of the 1970s and 80s. Solid fuel gave it faster launch times than older liquid fuel designs. 
but compared to modern standards, it's outdated. Guidance systems would have been limited, meaning its accuracy was probably measured in kilometers. The Sentinel, on the other hand, is a product of the digital age, with state-of-the-art navigation hardened against jamming and cyber threats. It can hit within meters of its target. That's the difference between striking a city and striking a specific bunker in that city. What about mobility? Here's an interesting twist. China often favors road mobile launchers, which make missiles harder to detect and destroy. While the DF-61 is believed to have been silo-based, later Chinese designs leaned heavily into mobility. The Sentinel, however, sticks with silos, hardened, secure, and integrated into a vast communication network. So while mobility gives China's arsenal some survivability, the U.S. counts on redundancy. Even if some silos are hit, enough missiles will remain to guarantee retaliation. Then we get to doctrine, and this might be the biggest difference of all. China's nuclear philosophy has always been about minimum deterrence. They don't need thousands of warheads. They don't need to match the U.S. missile for missile. All they need is enough to convince any enemy that a nuclear strike on China would be suicidal. The DF-61 fit right into that mindset. Just having the capability, even if limited, was enough to deter. The U.S., by contrast, practices extended deterrence. It's not just about defending itself. It's about defending allies, NATO, Japan, South Korea, and more. That's why America invests so heavily in accuracy, modernization, and scale. The Sentinel isn't just for the U.S. It's a signal to the entire world that the U.S. nuclear shield is alive and strong. So who wins in a direct comparison? If we're talking about technology, range, accuracy, and survivability, the Sentinel is the clear winner. It's simply decades ahead. But if we're talking about strategy, it's not so simple. The DF-61 was never meant to match American missiles one-to-one. -one. Its value lay in creating uncertainty, forcing adversaries to think twice. In that sense, it served its purpose for China's doctrine of limited but credible deterrence. And here's the thing. These missiles aren't built to fight each other. They're built to prevent wars. The Sentinel ensures America can always strike back. The DF-61 and the missiles that came after it ensure China can't be ignored or bullied. Both sides know the cost of nuclear war is too high. And so these missiles sit in silence, powerful, intimidating, and hopefully never used. At the end of the day, comparing the DF-61 and the Sentinel isn't really about who would win in a launch scenario. It's about understanding two different stories. The DF-61 tells the story of a rising power, finding its voice in the nuclear age. The Sentinel tells the story of a superpower, determined to maintain its edge and reassure its allies. And that's the beauty and the danger of nuclear deterrence. These weapons shape the world without ever being fired. They're the invisible giants of geopolitics, always lurking in the background, making sure no one crosses the line. So whether it's the DF-61 in the shadows or the Sentinel standing tall in its silo, both are reminders of the same truth. Peace in our world is often kept by weapons we hope never leave the ground.